If you really like the look of the buffer effect at the beginning of this chapter, you're probably going to like Glitch as well. Glitch is similar to Buffer, maybe it's got a few extra effects in it, and it's laid out a little differently. It may be a little bit more flexible, um, but it's just a different approach to a very similar effect. It's got Buffer effects in it, but it's also got some effects that Buffer hasn't, so it's got Tape Stop, etc. So, as usual, I'm going to show you the interface and show you how it works, and then I'm going to show you in action as well. So, like I said, we've got similar effects to buffer. We've got shuffle, stutter, gate, tape stop, and reverse. These can be activated at any time using these manual switches, and they're not toggle switches, so it's either on or off. So they're not sort of momentary switches, they're on or off switches. And we can adjust the volume, the mix of each effect, and we can adjust the resolution. So it's a, a synced resolution. The probability we'll get into in a second. But as with buffer, we can trigger this via MIDI. So if I um, use my MIDI keyboard, I can trigger each one. And this is momentary, they're sort of toggles. So this is much better. You can see that as I press a MIDI keyboard key, they go on and off as I press and let go, which I find you know much better for a performance effect. So these are quite good for testing the effect while you're working on it. But I would, again, use a MIDI keyboard or a control surface. So once you've got this set up and, you know, once you've decided what effects you're going to use, you can start to edit them. The resolution's really, really simple to edit because it's just musical measures, 16ths, 8ths, etc. Um, and an interesting thing that we have over here is a random area. And if we enable this, you'll see the, the lights start flashing. And we've got these knobs in the center here that are called probability. Now, if you turn these up, they're more likely this area is more likely to be triggered in the random sequence. So if I turn this all the way up and I turn the rest down, you'll probably notice the light is on over here a lot more than anywhere else. So if you don't want reverse in this sequence, you can turn it all the way down and it will never light up. If you then turn up something else halfway, these will light up half as much as the shuffle, etc, etc. So, you know, you can really sort of mold and custom shape the sequence of events. Of course it is random, <laughs> but you can really decide on what's favoured here. Then we've got a really nice little thing over here called click, and it actually de-clicks. What you'll find is, when you apply these effects, sometimes you get little clicks and pops, and it's literally, it, there's no error here, it's just, the, it's just the fact that you've got so many effects going on, and you've got like on-off volumes. So when, when a volume goes from uh, any value to zero straight away, you're going to get clicks. But this declicker will really help that. We've then got an external area, and I'm not going to get into this because I don't want to waste time with just showing you how to set up insert effects. But it's got external one to four, and you can set up, say, reverb sends or returns or delay send and returns, and you can include these and trigger these in the same way as the rest. And if you turn the probability up for these, these will actually be included in your random pattern as well. And these can also be triggered by MIDI. So a really cool effect. Let's take a look at it in action and see what it's capable of. <laughs> 